Hi, Mr. Alward. Good to have you back in studio. Thank you for making the time. Great to be here. Uh, there are thousands, maybe tens of thousands of Canadians today who won't be able to get their passport uh, process, other people who won't see their immigration application process, who might not be able to get their tax return when they were counting on getting it. What's your message to those Canadians today? Uh, look, the message to, uh, to Canadians is that, you know, we went to the bargaining table, uh, you know, seeking is something that was fair and decent. Uh, and this government uh, hasn't come across uh, with, 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 you know, with what we need to see. Uh, we did not want to go on strike. Uh, we made that very clear uh, so right from the day we started taking strike votes. We said our goal was to get to a deal and not to have to go on strike. Uh, we don't like this no more than uh, anybody else. Uh, this government forced us into this position. Was there any way, and I have to, uh, you know, just like I'll, I'm challenging the minister, challenge you, was there any way for you to avoid being in this position, for, for, for there to be more time at the negotiating mm. table, for example, to avoid the fact that, that all these people across this country now are, are worried about a lot of basic things in their life. Yeah, absolutely. We've been at the bargaining table since June of 2021. Very, very slow progress. When we announced the strike votes back in January, things all of a sudden then started picking up. We had a pick report that was released uh, in January, a public interest commission report that was released in January, when uh, Minister Forche actually said, came out publicly and said, we believe this is a path forward to a deal. That those same wages that were in that pick report were only tabled with us just before we went on strike. Is it, though, what was tabled, putting aside the timeline there, which is a fair challenge to the government, what was tabled, is it fair from your perspective? Is it enough? The, the current the yeah. wage offer? Yeah. No, we, we said this round of bargaining was about wages. And in the current economic context, all workers across this country are feeling very pinched. Our members, the majority of our members, make between forty and $65,000 a year. They can't suffer another rollback. That's what this government is asking them to do. We said we wanted to at least try to keep in line with inflation. Inflation for the same three-year period that we're negotiating for, intra, uh, inflation, sorry, I, kept, I said interest, inflation is at 13.8%. We're asking for 13.5% over those same three years. Uh, so again, you know, we didn't go is in and say... Is that your bottom well, line? Is that your bottom line, that it, that it match inflation? Like, is there, is there any way you would accept anything less, even what the mediator basically said was the path to a fair deal? We'll, we'll negotiate that. Uh, but as I said, we want a wage that uh, at least stays in line with, uh, with, with inflation. The government is facing a slowdown in the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a sizable deficit. It's projecting one at $40 billion. Do you understand sort of the analogy? It's like going to a company that's losing money and asking for a raise, right? They, they, there are certain fiscal constraints, and I'm not saying anyone deserves to make, you know, not be able to keep up with inflation. I do understand the argument you're making there, but it's not like the government is making money a hand, off, a hand over fist right now. Their revenues will see decreases in the future thanks to an economic slowdown, and they already have that $40 billion deficit. Mm -hmm. Are you not, is it not like you're going to a company that's losing money and saying, hey, give us a raise? Look. Workers, as I said, across the country, everyone is feeling pinched. When we sit back and watch, you know, corporations making record profits across this country, this government is not saying, maybe there's some revenue there. Maybe we should start taxing the wealthy in this country. Maybe we, 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 we should increase the corporate uh, tax rate against corporations. They're not talking about that. So, you know, the revenue streams are the revenue streams, as, as you just said. Uh, but again, it, something has to give here. Workers can't continue to keep falling further and further and further behind while corporations are making record profits. We're being gouged at the gas pumps, gouged in the grocery store aisles, but yet everybody wants to repress uh, workers' wages. And when the federal government, the government of Canada, the largest employer in the country, represses wages, for its own employees. What, in fact, that does, that represses wages for all workers right across this country. If they came to the table with something that was fair and decent and at least somewhat in line with inflation and set that bar for all workers, whether they're unionized, non-unionized, public sector, private sector, that's what we're looking for. Because 
it's not just our members. Every single worker in this country is fed up and frustrated. And, and I do take that point, but respectfully, Mr. Alward, I think most workers in this country, outside of the ones in your union, would hear a 9% raise and say, okay, that's pretty good. I don't know many people who are in, in receipt of one right now. Right, so that's why we're trying to get that bar set for all workers. But again, 9% is what the government's offering. If, if, if we set this bar at, at the federal government level, you know, that will trickle down provincially, territorially, and, and into uh, private sectors. And, and you know, that's what we're looking for. Do you have evidence of that? I mean, yes, we, we, we can demonstrate whatever is, you know, achieved at the federal level uh, has, has a trickle-down effect into provincial, territorial, territorial, and to private sectors as well. I mean, if this government can say, look, we're offering our, our, our employees a 2% increase, every employer in the country is going to say, oh, okay, I can offer two, maybe a little bit less than that. If, if the federal government can offer its employees this amount. So again, you know... But that's what they are. With so, respect, that's what they are. They are offering 3% each year for three years. So if the federal government offers that, then maybe, as you say, it'll trickle down. Like, is, it, I guess I'm, I'm just having a hard time understanding why that is, is not fair. Because it's, it's not, not in inflation. line with inflation. And, and, and as, you know, it's 9%, 13.5%. We're going to have a 4.5% difference. But inflation is so outsized in the past year and a half, right? It is coming back down, and I know this is for previous years, right. but this, these are outlier years. This is not nor a normal level of inflation. Right. I agree with you. Yes, early indicators that inflation is going to start coming down. But again, for the same three-year period that we're in negotiations for, inflation, 13.8%. And that's why we need something that at least stays in line with the rate of inflation. And as I said, we're doing this for all workers right across the country because everybody is just fed up. Just before I let you go, I think a lot of people watching are interested to know how long are you prepared uh, for your members to be on strike? We want to get to a deal. That is our goal. We want to get to a deal and put our members uh, back into the workplace because that's, that was our goal from day one. Uh, we, you know. We want to get to a deal. We're still at the table. Our teams are caucusing right now as we speak. They're meeting. So we're still at the table. We want to get to a deal. Okay, Mr. Alward, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much. My pleasure.